right, what is going on? Happy fucking Monday. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the Risen Fallen Podcast. I am your host, Mark Hendrickson, and I hope you're having a good morning. If you're listening to this on the Monday morning when it drops, if you're listening to this in the afternoon, I hope the day's doing well. If you're listening to this in the evening, I hope your day went well. And if it didn't, maybe reflect back, maybe do some journaling, maybe do some reflection and meditation and think about what could have gone better, what you could have done differently, what what uh, what improvements you can make for the next day. And if you listen to this on another day, then I hope that day's going well. You can practice this whether that's Monday or not for you. But um, welcome to the show. If you're brand new to this, what you can expect to hear, what you can anticipate is some open and authentic conversations about things like mental health and self-development and and conversations along those lines. And if you're a, a returning listener, a returning viewer, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever, um, thank you very much for the continued support. Whether you're brand new to this or you listened before, um, regardless of if you're returning or you're brand new, like I said, uh, you are the reason that I do what I do. You know, you people are the, are the ones that I, I keep coming back for. I keep coming back to support and let you know that no matter what it is you're going through, you're not alone and life can and will get better for you. And that's how, what we're going to talk about today is how you can start to create a better life for yourself, how you can start to get life getting a little bit better for you. So, You know, whether you deal with mental illness or you don't, you know, maybe you're just suffering in other ways. Maybe you're you're going through a tough time or maybe things are going pretty well. You can use this trick. You can use this tactic as a way to uh, visualize how you want to change your life. And so when you start on a a self-development journey, uh, when you start off on, you know, getting uh, your life in a better direction, a better gear, um, you know, moving forward, some, you got, when the rubber hits the road, when you start to start, um, improving your life, maybe you start, uh, listening to some podcasts, you start reading some different books, maybe you start journaling, maybe you start going to see a counselor, maybe you start, I don't know, whatever the fuck, uh, you do to, uh, start your journey off. You know, a lot of the times we hear things like you want to visualize the person you want to become. You want to think about the person you want to be. Uh, think about how you want your life to look and, and uh, you know, from everything from, you know, the career you work, the clothes you wear, the haircut you have, the, the things that you have in your life, how you spend your time, how you spend your day, how you make your money, who your partner is, what they look like, what they act like, uh, how they treat you, how you treat them, uh, where you live, uh, what kind of home you live in. Is it a house, an apartment, a mansion, a fucking condo is it downtown is it in a rural area is it you know you start to ask yourself and break down all of these different things and um that's a fucking pretty solid way to start visualizing who you want to become and that can be very very helpful in fact i've even talked about those types of things in the podcast before but um you know maybe you take a second you you do some reflection and you think about these things and you think I'm not really sure. I don't really know, you know, maybe uh, who I want to be, what I want to do, etc. You could be like me and there's so many things that catch your eye and you'd start chasing every single fucking shiny thing. And it gets kind of overwhelming because it's like, well, I know where I, 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 I know I would like this. I know I would like that. And I don't know if I would prefer one over the other and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, if you're anybody like, if you're anything like me and you're, you're, you're one of those ADHD kids, you're very impulsive. You, you know, you, you chase after these shiny things. Um, it's easy to get distracted because you could find out about something else and think about it a little bit more and be like, okay, I actually want that now. I actually want this now. I actually, you know, want to gun towards this goal. I want to go towards that thing, whatever it could be. I think sometimes it's, uh, extremely you know, important and useful to think in those terms. And I think that that's a good exercise for you to do to kind of get like a good blueprint or guideline for your life. Uh, It can help you pick your career. It can help you pick how you spend your time. It can help you pick maybe some hobbies, how much, how often you work out, what your nutrition looks like, et cetera. But I did want to talk about uh, kind of another tool that I've been using uh, recently to kind of make some adjustments in my life and in terms of my behavior and, uh, the way I spend money, um, the way I eat, the way I, I, uh, you know, work out the way I exercise, the way I wake up in the morning and I start to use a different tool. And, and I'll call this 
you know, maybe negative visualization. That's one of the tools I've been using very recently, and it's been helping me out quite a lot. And what I mean by negative visualization is to think about the things you don't want in your life, the things you don't want to continue in your life, whether that's a behavioral thing, whether that's uh, the way you treat yourself, the way you treat the people around you. I know for myself, I start to think about the things that I don't fucking want in my life ever fucking again. And this comes into play in a lot of different aspects of life. And I'll give you guys a couple examples. You know, growing up, I wasn't always like a, an, a, a as athletic as I am now. I wasn't always as uh, disciplined. I didn't really try hard in anything. And I know for myself, I kind of fucked myself out of a lot of good opportunities to excel in life because I didn't want to put effort in. I didn't want to have people see me try while I failed at something because I thought that, you know, it was okay, it was cool to fail if I didn't try because then I had that kind of cool kid, like, I don't give a fuck about this, I don't care about that. It kind of gave me a little bit more of an excuse and a cop-out when I did fail. It kind of seemed embarrassing for me if I tried at something and I, I really wanted to do something and then I failed at it. That was very embarrassing for me and it happened quite a few times. And uh, after dealing with that shame and that embarrassment, I, I kind of realized, hey, you know, if I give off this vibe, this this idea that I don't really give a fuck, I don't really want to apply myself or try, and then I fail, then it's like kind of like whatever. People will just kind of shrug it off like I didn't care. Like that was the way I thought. And because of that, it led me down some dark roads in terms of, you know, substance abuse. But a lot of the time it was even just like the way I ate and treated my body and spoke about myself and spoke about other people. And so I got to a point where, you know, I get you know, undressed at, at night before I shower, I look myself in the mirror and I look at my body. I look at the way I look and the way I presented myself to the world. And I thought, I fucking hate this person. And looking back, you know, I use this negative visualization as a tool to think I never want to look and feel like that ever again. It was so detrimental to my mental health, my self-confidence, my self-esteem. And, um, you know, my overall discipline because I, I would, you know, basically just put myself in a position where I didn't care about whether something was good for me or not. I put it in my body if I thought that it would give me 5, 10, 15 minutes or seconds of instant gratification and make me feel good in the moment. And I didn't care about the repercussions that those things had on my body, whether it was drugs, whether it was just fucking sweets, candies, you know, shit that I shouldn't be eating, shit that I shouldn't be putting in my body. I didn't care. And I know now, looking back at that time of my life, that I don't want that to be a part of my life ever again. So I use this negative visualization, these negative memories that I have, and I revisit those memories to think, I don't want that in my life ever again. And then I think, well, how did I get there? What behaviors did I have? What emotions did I have? What feelings did I have? What behavioral patterns did I have? What, what um, led me down that road in the first place? You know, that's one of the ways that I use this tool. Another way I use this tool is I'll look at, you know, my bank account consistently. And getting into debt was one of the worst things that I ever did for myself. My confidence, my, uh, and obviously my financial situation, I looked at my bank account and I thought, fuck, this is so fucking embarrassing and shitty. It's shameful. I feel guilty. I feel terrible. Like there's so many different uh, negative emotions attached to debt. And for years, I, I would say, hey, I'm going to hustle, I'm going to grind, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to get my way out of it. And every year at the end of the year, I would look at my bank account and it would be the same thing, if not worse. And then using this negative visualization, you know, a lot more recently, I've I, I, I looked at myself and I said, I don't ever want to be in this fucking position ever again. I don't ever want to be in in that, that feeling of... Uh, having no power over my financial life, that feeling of, you know, um, shame and guilt and feeling like I was so careless. And so, uh, again, it kind of comes back to that undisciplined mindset. And so I thought about, I journaled about what were the behavioral patterns that got me into this position? What were the reasons that I got into this position? Because obviously, if it's a reoccurring problem in my life, then I have fucking some part to play in this as well. Like this isn't, you can blame the government, you can blame the fucking economy, you can blame your fucking boss, you can blame 
fucking everybody until you're fucking blue in the face. But at the end of the day, if you have the same problem consistently in your life, chances are you're part of the fucking problem. And so using this negative visualization to recall negative times in your life to think about, hey, I have this negative emotion, I have this trauma, I have this experience, I have this thing that I tie to negativity and this constant problem in my life, I don't ever want to fucking deal with that again. And if I do have to deal with something like that in the future, I want to be as prepared and as formidable and as strong and as as disciplined as I possibly can so that if a problem like this occurs and it's outside of my control, I know exactly how to fucking deal with it again because I uh, you can... You can visualize and hope for the fucking best things in the world for you to, for those things to manifest and come your way. But it's also important to visualize the negativity and to meditate and to think and reflect on those negative times and to think about I don't if I don't want these things to repeat in my life, what is the best way I can control the situation such that if it does ever occur again, I know how to deal with it. Now, you can do this not just with finances, not just with your physique, not just with your drug addiction or whatever it could be. You could think about this in any aspect or or anything like that again. You can recall, um, you know, the, the places that you've worked, the people that you've worked for, the amount of time that you worked, the schedule that you held. You can think about all of these different things and you could think, I never want that ever fucking again. I know that you know, for a long time, I've, I've kind of jumped from industry to industry, from job to job. I've worked in a lot of different places. I've worked in gyms. I've worked in restaurants. I've worked in, in construction. I've worked in fucking retail. Um, I've tried some online businesses. I've done fucking a lot of different things. And I know for myself, you know, there's a lot of aspects of certain jobs that I don't want to have in my life ever again. I know that when I worked in bars and restaurants, it was super fucking fun. It was like fucking party central. And I was a fucking, you know, a lot of the times I, I like to think of myself as life of, of the party. You know, if you guys see me in social situations, I'm fucking loud. I'm fucking uh, outlandish sometimes. I'm definitely outspoken. And I, I like to make people laugh. I like to make people smile. And I do my best to do those things when I'm in social situations. Um, but that being said, when I think about some of the days that I worked in, in, in uh, like kind of the bar setting or the restaurant setting, I know there was so many times where I'd have to fucking be at work until, you know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, getting off work late and then having to clean up the place afterwards. And I know that I don't want that in my life. I don't want to have that kind of, um, you know, to have to stay up that late. For me, it just doesn't gel well, because especially if you guys follow me on Instagram, you see, I like to wake up early. I like to get after it. I like to have a little bit more control over my life that way. And just, uh, it didn't work for my sleep pattern. So I know for myself, using this negative visualization that I've been talking about. I don't want to have that in my life again. I like to have my evenings to be a little bit more somber, to be a little bit more quiet, a little bit more reflective. I don't even like fucking leaving my house after fucking six o'clock at night. So I can use that tool, that negative visualization to think about, I don't want that in my life again. And I can use that as a tool to then choose my next job. Now, you obviously can't fucking, and, and this is one of the things that everybody in our fucking generation is going to say, oh, well, I don't want to fucking work. I don't want to have someone control my schedule. I don't want to fucking have to work every single day of my life. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to fucking hustle. I don't want to work hard. I don't want to be pushed. I don't want pressure. I don't want blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the day, there's certain things that you just cannot avoid. You're going to feel pressure in your life. You're going to have to fucking work. Everybody has to fucking work. You have to fucking earn your keep. You have to make some fucking money. You have to be able to at least produce money when you fucking need it. So Maybe you're going to get yourself to a point where you're fucking wealthy enough that you don't have to work all the fucking time. But chances are, if you stop and you fucking slow down and you stop working, you're going to lose it. You're going to fucking lose what got you to the place that got you successful in the first place. So the idea of like this passive fucking income is a fucking dream world. And anybody that's promoting the, the idea that you can get a passive fucking income is an absolute fraudster. Even if they're able to pull it off for the first couple of years or whatever, Chances are you see them in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years down the road. You have to think long term. These people are going to be fucking asking for jobs from you if you keep fucking grinding your ass off now. So think about the things that you don't like doing. Narrow it down to a list. 
Think about the things that are bearable that you can fucking see yourself doing. I know for myself, it was easy to think about the things that I didn't want to do in my life. And that led me back to the job that I'm at right now. I quit construction. I worked in the gym. I worked in some restaurants. I worked in online jobs. Um, and I thought to myself, you know, I don't want to be fucking stuck at a desk all day. I don't want to be stuck inside. I like being outside. I don't want to be fucking inside. I don't want to be sitting at a desk crunching numbers. I don't want to be fucking, you know, making cold calls for sales all fucking day. Um, as much as I love fucking talking, it's, it wasn't for me. I didn't want to fucking do that. I don't want to pressure people to fucking buy things that they don't feel like they want or need. Is there a time and place for that? Yeah, sometimes, but I just didn't want to fucking do it all day. So it was easy for me to come back to construction knowing I don't want those things. Well, what could I handle? I don't mind. I fucking love moving all day. In fact, I need to. I'm hyperactive and it fucking keeps my body moving. It keeps me healthy. It gives me more reason to exercise and work out, keep my body moving and fucking in shape and prepared to fucking lift heavy things and you know, it was, it was an obvious choice for me to go back into the trades. Um, and you know, I like being outside. I like doing different things all the fucking time. I didn't want to have to do the same thing all the fucking time and just be mind numbed that way. Um, and so thinking back to some of the other jobs that I had showing up to the same building every single day, doing the same things every single day, I didn't want to fucking do that. Whereas in construction, I show up to different places all the fucking time. I'm faced with different challenges. I'm learning new things all the time. I'm doing things differently. I have to adapt to new surroundings, new challenges, especially in renovation work. That's exactly the name of the game because no fucking house is the exact same. There's always going to be somebody that fucked up or tried to cut corners when building every different fucking place in Vancouver, it seems. And when you get into renovations, it's like, all right, well, I got to first figure out how this fucking jack off built this place and then see how I can fix it and bring it back up to code and make this place beautiful for the homeowner. So that's that's kind of a little bit personal, but I mean, uh, I'm sure you can apply different aspects of that to your life as well. At the end of the day, you're not above the work. Everybody's going to have to fucking work and everybody's going to have to pay their dues. Everybody's going to have to feel pressure. Everybody's going to have to be disciplined. But you're gonna have, you can use this tool of negative visualization to think about the things that you need to eliminate from your life. If you don't like your fucking body, you don't like the fucking skin that you're in, you don't like fucking looking at yourself and you, you hate what you see, think about the behaviors. Think about the fucking um, crutches you've been using, the behavioral patterns you have, the coping mechanisms that you have. Are you fucking stuffing your face with things that are going to give you a dopamine rush with instant gratification and fucking sugars and and uh, saturated fat. I don't know what the fuck it is for you. Um, cut that shit out. Think about what is the root of this problem? Why am I needing to fucking cope this way? And you know, if it's a substance abuse problem, same fucking thing. If it's a financial issue, like I said, same fucking thing. If it's a problem with where you work or what you do for work, same fucking thing. You could even think about it in a relationship as well. You can use this negative visualization tool to look and, re and reflect on your relationship. You know, have you had a toxic relationship in the past? Chances are you probably fucking have. Think about what aspects of that negative and toxic relationship that you had and then think about eliminating some of those things for your future relationships. Did I get fucking cheated on? Well, I probably don't want that experience to happen again. What led to that experience happening? Was I fucking unfaithful to my partner in the first place? Was I emotionally cheating and that led them to physically cheating? Was I fucking, you know, disinterested or dishonest? Or was I, you know, was it just random luck of the draw and I was dating some shitbag that goes out and fucking parties all the time? Well, chances are they're going to fucking cheat on you. That's a huge fucking red flag. Um, you know, you can reflect back on certain aspects of, of your life and use this tool of negative visualization to think about, I don't want this thing to happen ever fucking again. So assuming that I had a little bit of responsibility in the situation, what can I control to make sure that this doesn't happen in my life ever again? What can I control to make sure that I'm not in this position? And if I fucking find myself in this position again, what can I do to make myself get out of this situation as fast as fucking possible with as little negative impact in my life as possible? And that's the way I use negative vis visualization. Think about the things that I don't want in my life. Think about how they got in my life in the first place and then 
do my very best to control what I can control such that my life moves in a better direction from there. I think that summarizes exactly what I'm trying to, to, to uh, convey to you and, and uh, the message that I'm trying to deliver to you. Um, if you feel like this content helped you, if you feel like this episode kind of helped you uh, gain a new tool that you can use, maybe you're going to hit your journal tonight and think about these types of things that you don't want to have in your life when you're planning on what you do want to have in your life. If this helped you out, please do share it with someone. Share the YouTube version. Share this fucking uh, audio version. Share the podcast. Uh, share with a friend that needs to hear this message. Uh, maybe share with a friend that doesn't want to hear it but probably still needs to hear it. Uh, and tell them Mark sent you. And we love you. We're just fucking telling you this because we love you. And... Um, Yeah, that's pretty much it. We do have the Risen Fallen group. Uh, We do uh, our daily conversations on on, uh, Telegram. So we have our daily conversations there. We do have weekly either a meetup or a Zoom call. Uh, We either meet up in person or we jump on Zoom. We have kind of like a weekly review. We chat about what we're going through right now, how we can overcome it. Sometimes we go for hikes. Sometimes we go for a little coffee date with each other. Um, If you want to be involved in these types of things, to create a little bit more connectivity, to create a little bit more community, to just fucking get out and talk about these things that we don't get to talk about on a daily basis, reach out to me on Instagram and uh, let's get the conversation going. Join the community because uh, the world needs more people like you, people that want to fucking improve their lives and help lift other people up along the way. And you can be a leader in your community. You might just not know it yet. So... Reach out. Let's get you in the group. Let's get you fucking leading these conversations, helping other people out. If you want to support and you're not from Vancouver, you can cop some Risen Fallen merch. It's on the website, risenfallen.com. Uh, we got hoodies, tees. They're fucking beautiful. They're fucking comfortable. I don't know what I got to say to get you in this Risen Fallen apparel, but you need to get some in your life right now. That's all I got for today. Hope you're doing well. Much love and peace out, you beautiful fucking humans. Have a good week. It's Monday, baby. Let's fucking grab this week by the balls and take it for a fucking victory lap. I love you all. Much love. Peace out. Bye.